Hi guys, and I'm back with this review of this West Country um, Loco, this Southern West Country Loco. This is a Hornby one, and it ranges from the 2000s. Before I start, uh, I will say it doesn't come weathered. Uh, I, I wanted a weathered Loco for the simple fact uh, I got that many uh, spam cams. I just thought it'd be nice to have one that's weathered. Uh, we are looking at Cloverly, and the number is uh, 34037. Um, so yeah, let's go on with the view. Here is some information, model information on the um, Battle of Britain class and the uh, West Country class. Kit mass to produce an unpowered polystyrene injection moulded kit for double O from the 1960s to late 1962. The brand then was sold on to Airfix, which resumed productions um, six years later in 1968. The mould was later passed on to Depot, which continues to produce the kits now. Hornby manufactured ready-to-run, rebuilt and unrebuilt examples of the class throughout its history, including its minor changes. Graham Farris produced a ready-to-run model of the N, N in Engage. Uh, Dapol have announced their intentions to uh, release a model in N as well, which they say will be ready for May uh, 2012. Hornby Dapol produced a die-cast metal rebuilt West Country class from the 60s, and those became Triang Wren, the ultimate uh, tri uh, Wren railways. Wren produced an air-smooth version and rebuilt version right through to its demise and uh, sold on to Dapple in the early 90s. So as we move on to the front of the Loco, uh, it has a small tension lock coupling, the buffers are sprung, the um, electric lights at the front uh, look pretty good, we can hardly see them being weathered. This metal box door has some great detail as the um, a disc there for the uh, code of the train, what style of train it was. Uh, you can also see through to the, the chimney of the air smooth casing uh, streamer and it has some deflectors as well. Buffer beam is it's got a simply applied hook which looks pretty nice. As we look at the side of the loco, I believe these are steam chests here, they're lovely weathered, it has that lovely uh, southern lining there of the uh, yellow and green basically. This is a West Country class, it says West Country, there it is legible, um, this is Cloverly. The number is really, really nice printed on. The fine pipe detail down near the uh, rear bogey truck is pretty nice as well. Them iconic bullied wheels, I believe they're actually from America if I'm honest. Uh, are pretty nice. The uh, linkage is basic but it's southern and it's stunning as well. As you see we have a smoke deflector too. We have glazing in the cab uh, as well. Uh, fine actual work on the uh, bogey truck too. So on to the other side of the loco. It's basically the same. Uh, they both have the brake reading uh, separately applied um, there at the bottom of the wheels as well. The only difference on this side really is I think there's less piping around here. I could be wrong. Uh, both have small handrails here too. As you can see from this view here, the smoke deflectors are separately applied. There is some whistles and safety valves uh, in this cab somewhere. The vent does not open, but that's not an issue. The iconic bullet chimney. Uh, Hornby have done a really, really nice job on the roof. Hornby have done a really nice job on this um, cab. Basically all painted, um, not separate fly, but it's, it's painted, that's the main thing. We have tiny, tiny windows uh, there, just just there. Same on the other side, we have some wood flooring effect going on in there. Uh, dials are not uh, painted, but they've got a white background. 
As we look at the underneath of the locomotive, the six main driving wheels pick up and then there's a few wirings that go into this uh, connection here, which has pickups as well. The front bogey and the rear bogey does not have pickups as far as I can see. You also get some reputation of the braking stuff and springs as well. So let's start on this side of the Southern uh, Tender. Just a basic art line there. It's, um, I believe it's yellow, green, yellow, green, yellow. Um, Hornby have done a good job of the actual boxes. Not separately uh, painted, but it's still nice, especially with this weathered look I've got here. We have a ladder at the back here. We have some steps, sorry about that, some steps down there and there as well. There's separately flawed handrails there and on the other side as well. There's no coal load, but I'll show you in a minute. So yeah, it's basically the same around here. Nothing uh, different at all. I just thought I'd show it to you so you can tell it, um, you know, what both sides look like. The weathering is slightly different on this side, I must agree. As we move on to uh, the, well, technically front of the tender, um, which connects straight around to the cab, we have the connection there to um, the loco, we have the coal load, some coal load hanging out. We have, I think that's a water scoop there. We have some drawers and some uh, cupboard space in there as well. Now at the back of the tender, we have them uh, separately well, um, molded lights again that all lurkers had at a certain point in time. We have a hook uh, down there which is separately applied. We have a small coupling as well. Spring buffers again, which are metal. We have the ladders um, separately applied. As we look at the top of the tender, there's a few coal loads, uh, coal spilled over here with some water effect. There's a minute coal load in there too. I think these are gas cylinders, I could be wrong, but that's where you fill your water up there. As we move on to the underneath of the tender, we have the brake rigging already applied. We also have the screw where you can take the coupling and the shell, and the, um, shell off the tender. We have pickups on, I believe, all six, if not it's four wheels, uh, and that's then transfers the power from that connection there into the loco. So next up will be um, the points test and also uh, second radius, just to see if it's second radius or not. So yeah, here goes the test. Just past the nine. That really isn't bad for a 19 year old loco. Um, on DC as well. It's pretty impressive. I'd say it managed that pretty well, uh, quite impressive for what uh, I think it's a 20, almost a 20 year old loco. Um, the, the speed of getting across in points was um, impressive for a DC loco anyway. Uh, next up will be some slow speed and then we'll wind it a friend. I think it the right way.
So yeah guys, that's the end of the running session. Um, time for my opinion, and I must stress it's only my opinion. Uh, before I, I get into that, I'll show you what we're running. Obviously we had the M M7. Uh, this is the National Railway Museum uh, liveried version one. Uh, we had Cloverly on some teaks and a Pullman. Uh, in the shed we had, let's start at the back, we had the Coronation. Um, and the Coronation class. We also had the Streamline Merchant Navy, which is, um, or Air Smooth, which is Royal Mail. And then, obviously, here we've got the Mallard. And next to her, we have um, a Great Western, a uh, half hearted attempt at streamlining. Uh, this is a castle. Um, oh, but too far. It's a castle. And it is Melbourne. I think that's what it is anyway. Um. So so yeah, my opinion on this one. Uh, for a local that came out in two thousand, it runs pretty pretty sweet. Uh, no issues over points. Um, no issues anywhere really. Yeah, the tender does slightly squeak. Uh, but. Um, I'll have to oil it at some point, that's the only issue. Uh, like I said, it does pick up from the tender as well as the uh, six main driving wheels. Um, so, yeah. Uh, would I recommend one? Obviously, to a Southern fan, y y yeah, they'll, yeah, they'll buy it. Uh, someone who collects Dreamland locos, yeah. Uh, anyone else? I don't, know, I don't know. If you could do diesel, you could have it as a. Uh, um, one of them steam tours that come come through your, your city or town uh, would be a great idea. Uh, I don't know what you guys think to the weathering though. Um, unsure how the review picks it up. But yeah, it looks nice to me anyway. Um, so yeah, let me know what your opinions is. Um, and until next time, guys, it's goodbye from these beauties and it's goodbye from me. Bye.